We're about to go over 20 things only a real American Bully dog owner could actually sit down and talk to you about. All dogs' main colors come from red or black. Real American Bully dogs are no different. They do have a dilution gene that actually changes the black to blues and the red to fawns, maybe even champagne. We then have tricolored Real American Bully dogs that actually have tan points over their eyebrows, down their cheeks, all the way down to their pasterns. One thing that I can say about all registries that recognize the Real American Bully dog is that albinoism is not something that is desired. So if you see a dog that's completely white with red eyes, that's completely disqualified within our breed. Now to hit on some of the patterns that you could see on the American Bully, we have Ticked, Highball, Merle, to name a few. Now Merle has really trended here recently. Before you buy a pup off of a Merle litter, make sure that it has a genetic test. You cannot breed Merle to Merle as this is a dominant gene. You can create some seriously bad results. From blind to completely deaf pups due to the lack of melanin that is involved in this. Yes, man, let me tell you something. I don't care what size American Bully you have, if you live on a confined studio, make sure the dog's outside before you light a match. All dogs have gas. American Bullies, for some reason, have a lot of gas, and they love to share it. It's one of the smartest dogs I've come across. It kind of works both ways. I've seen American Bullies be smart enough where they want to please you, make you happy, but if you're not their alpha, they will actually use their smarts against you. That's why it's always important to be an alpha, not just to the American Bully, but to any dog. If you haven't seen that video that we've posted yet, make sure you hit our playlist and check it out. I get asked all the time, why are American Bullies so expensive? Well, let's face it, they've been trending. They've been trending a lot. Whether it's the physique, the temperament, just the overall look. American Bullies, they got it. I will also tell you, if you ever own a bully, you're never going to want to own anything else. Guarantee it. The real American Bully dog is one of the easiest dogs for you to groom. They are short haired and all you gotta do is trim nails, pass a brush on them, bathe them once every two weeks, you should be good to go. Let's talk a little bit about the health issues that usually involve our breed. Just going to give you just commonalities that I usually see within our breed. Cherry eye is something I've seen quite a bit, and it's a common term used for prolapse of the third eyelid gland. The third eyelid contains a special gland that produces a significant portion of the eye's protective tear film. So when this gland prolapses or pops out, the condition is known as cherry eye. The other condition I've seen in the eyes is something called ectropion, which is an abnormality of the eyelids in which the lower eye eyelid rolls outward or is everted. And of course, the other one I do see is called entropion, which is an abnormality of the eyelids in which the eyelid rolls inward instead of outward. The other thing I see often that you see in large breed dogs is heart murmurs. There are dogs that could be born with a heart murmur as long as it's not anything more than a category two. Sometimes by the time they turn six months, it actually does clear. Another thing I see quite a bit is happy tail. And this usually happens whenever you have a dog in a cramp situation or in a situation where its tail is actually able to hit something that will actually create an ulceration on the tail and you'll have blood splattered all over the place. It'll look like a crime scene. Usually it's an easy fix. You just bandage up the spot where the ulceration is at and then you bandage up the tail. Now you gotta let it breathe. You can't just leave it bandaged, bandaged, up, bandaged up all the time, but you get my point. The other thing I do see quite a bit is brachial cephalic syndrome and I see that on the shorter muzzle dogs. And those are the ones where that bulldog trait actually comes through the most and you can figure them out because they usually have a shorter muzzle and their mouth breathers these dogs you have to be very careful especially during the heat as they can stroke out rather easily now i've spoken about most of the things i see on the outside now on the inside, I do recommend everybody to get their dogs Embark tested. There's seven variants that actually go exclusively to our breed. One of them, the CRD4 slash Cord1, hasn't proven to actually translate into our breed. It is there because it is a marker for the Staffordshire Terrier, who is actually one of the parent breeds used to make our breed. I'm not a history buff, but this is quick history for you. Dave Wilson actually started developing the American Bully in the late 1980s, and the final touches on behavior and aesthetics was actually put in in the early 1990s, and thus the breed was born. There's a consensus of five other breeds used to make the bully traits that we're currently seeing on the American Bully, and that's the American Bulldog, the English Bulldog, the Old English Bulldog, and the Old English Bulldog with an E at the end, plus the APBT and the Staffordshire Terrier. Mass and heavy bone were prioritized as well as a wide front. 
Mistakes. What are the mistakes most bully breeders make? Yeah, I know. You're trying to add all this weight to this young dog that's not even 18 months. Bone plates haven't even sealed. And you're just adding weight because you want him to be as big as his dad, but he's only four months old. The other mistake I see is people heavy exercising their dogs before 18 months. Bam. Bone plates matter. If you do this before they're 18 months, you could actually shift bone plates outside of where they actually need to be. You just need to be patient and let your puppy be a puppy. Woo! Yep, now I told you before, adding too much protein to your dog is also a major problem as you weaken their soft tissue. Yep, I'll tell you another one. So here's a little tidbit one of them generic documentaries can't give you. As far as feeding protein, we do the 15-24-30 rule. We aim at 15% protein for our puppies, 24% protein for our adults, 30% protein for our active adults. If your dogs are extremely active, you can change the protein rate accordingly. Just to make sure we're right on the amount of protein, I always make sure I have my dogs on a barf diet. If you haven't checked out our barf diet video, make sure you check it out on the playlist. We got some little seafood over here. We got muscle meat. We got some organ meat. Real dog box. Mm, check it out. As you can imagine, registry recognition did not happen immediately. In fact, it didn't happen until 2004 when Dave Wilson, the same guy that actually started the breed, actually started the ABKC, which is the American Bully Kennel Club. And they were the first to recognize the American Bully as a breed. Four years after, the European Bully Kennel Club in 2008 recognized the American Bully as well. Fast forward five years and the UKC recognizes the American Bully on July 15, 2013. At the time, they had to be registered as Pitbull through the UKC and then years later, they actually allowed the American Bully designation directly on the registry. BRC Global recognized the American Bully in 2015 and were pioneers in allowing the Merle American Bully into the actual show ring. Despite the American Bully's fierce and powerful appearance, the real American Bully dog is quite gentle. They're great with kids and extremely friendly with strangers, other dogs, and other animals. Human or dog aggression, extreme shyness, or viciousness is very uncharacteristic of the American Bully and extremely undesirable. It is a highly adaptable, trainable, loving companion, which is the reason this breed was made for in the first place. This can sometimes be detrimental. Because of his temperament, the American Bully usually does not make a good security dog for large area. But make no mistake about it, the American Bully will defend its owner if it feels that he or she is being threatened. Now before you go buy an American Bully, always realize that there is value within the brand. That doesn't mean just go run and be slaughtered like a sheep. Just know that there's three types of bullies. I don't care in which category. That's the pet quality bully who has two major flaws or more. It either has a kink tail or a serious underbite or a very exaggerated flaw that doesn't make it suitable for breeding. You then have the breed quality which is one major and one minor flaw as long as it doesn't have anything exaggerated. And finally you have show quality which is going to be two minor flaws or less. Flaws such as east-west, high rear, stiff stifles, underbite are probably one of the most common you're going to come across. If you're looking to buy and you want more information on these flaws, I suggest you check more videos out on our platform that will give you the education that you're looking for before you make the purchase. Also, even though they're great with kids, you want to make sure that you supervise your kids around the dog. You want to make sure that you educate your kids to not ride the dog like a horse, jump on their ribs, poke their eyes, or do any of those things. Even though this breed was made to be a companion breed and they're great with children, you don't ever want to allow that to happen because you don't know what limits each particular dog has. One thing that is rarely spoken about is sibling syndrome. And all that is is when you buy either a brother and a sister, two brothers or two sisters from the same litter. They actually grow up and they have a bond that's much stronger than the one that they have with their master. So that would be you. You want to stay away from this situation as it can become problematic in training the dogs or even bringing up behavioral issues. American bullies come in a variety of sizes that have mainly been recognized by registries. Two that haven't been recognized are the XXLs who are actually taller than 23 inches at Withers and American bullies that are actually shorter than 14 inches at Withers. The sizes that are mainly recognized by all registries are pockets at 14 to 17 inches at Withers for male and 16 to 13 inches for female. Classic slash standard and the main difference of the two is that standards are just thicker than the classics but they both stand between 17 
18 to 20 inches at withers for males and 16 to 19 inches at withers for females. And last on the list, you have the XL. They stand 20 to 23 inches at withers for males and 19 to 22 inches at withers for females. I mentioned the variety of sizes so you can make the best educated choice as to your living condition, which dog will fit best. Appropriate space for a pocket, standard or classic, could be a small yard or even if you live in an apartment, as long as you have access to a dog park or somewhere where your dog can still go and get its exercise. American Bully excels on the other hand, need a large yard where they can run and exercise. I don't recommend that you keep them in a small apartment because they're gonna knock everything over with their tails. Remember I told you a little while ago to not forget that American Bullies are big powerful dogs for their size. Well, one of the things that you must do with your American Bully, regardless what size they are, is you must get them socialized. Socialization could come in the form of going to the dog park, taking them to Home Depot, exposing them to loud noises, children, other dogs, friends and family. You want your dog to not be spooked by situations or noises or things that they haven't seen before when they become adults. And the way that you do that is you start exposing them from when they're small and you socialize. You get them out there and they start learning that not everything out there is there to hurt them. So let them get out there and experience the world. Man, I almost forgot. Allergies is one of those things that hits our breed really hard. It's either from seasonal allergies or from the diet. A lot of times there's ingredients in kibble that can actually cause allergies. One of the reasons why I'm one of the proponents for BARF. If you don't know what BARF stands for, it stands for either bones and raw food or biologically appropriate raw food. In either case, it actually helps greatly with allergies. Before you put your dogs on a barf diet, you want to make sure you check with your vet. Also, if you're interested 